Welcome back to the latest installment of our Workflow From Home series. I'm Michael Cioni, and for this episode, we thought it might be nice to not just talk about remote workflows in theory, but to actually explore some that are already in place and highly functional. That's why throughout this series, we'll interview people from different sectors of the industry to get a look under the hood of their remote setups and how they configure them. For today's episode, we spoke with Lucas Harger, partner and editor of Bruton Struby Post in St. Louis, Missouri. What's interesting here is the vast majority of the projects at Bruton Struby come from clients who are not located in St. Louis. It's why they built a robust and flexible remote workflow in the first place and why they've been using Frame.io for years. As we've said in the outset of this series, everyone's workflow is gonna be slightly different. So there's no absolute right way to approach any workflow, but we hope episodes like this will help you see how other industry pros have built stable remote workflows and will inspire you to build or optimize your own. So I'm really happy to have Lucas Harger here and thank you, Lucas, for coming on and joining us on Workflow From Home. Yeah, yeah, no worries, I'm glad to be here. So first thing, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, I am an editor based in St. Louis, Missouri. I run a post house. Uh, there's about five of us editors, and we have sound design, uh, VFX, and color. And we do everything from 30s to features. And so advertising work all the way to original documentary content and then kind of beyond into features and, and films. So first, tell us a little bit about your typical workflow. When the world is not going crazy, what is the typical shape of your your world? We have all of the disciplines of post that we most often use under one roof. And so we're walking across halls, we're chatting with with individuals, we're all synced up to a common server. With that said, about 99% of our clients, our production partners and brands are outside of St. Louis. And so we're working on the cloud and doing remote workflows with them, client facing a lot. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about what's changed. What is your workflow now that you're essentially remote working from home? Um, Last week, early on in the week, we started to mobilize and figure out workstations for people and and the physical capabilities of doing this work remotely. We've been using Frame.io for client production partner and brand collaboration for a long time, years. Uh, And so nothing really changed there on on our workflow, but where it did change is now all of a sudden Frame.io started to become this internal collaboration method. Uh, And so what we basically did was migrate our job folder structure a two frame that then allowed us to back up our files that we had locally to the cloud should there be some issue or disaster with the individual artists workstations but it was all about you know a getting the hardware home with the artists and then b setting up a backup structure and a common repository that is mirrored to our server and then once a day i go in and reconcile everything between servers and uh frame that's awesome lucas so tell us a little bit about what would be some of the, like, you know, uh, the first couple of steps that someone that's planning to do a work from home transition, what are a couple of the gotchas that you discovered along the way that might help them out? I mean, the big thing is making sure you have all of your commonly accessed resources, whether that's sound effects, whether that's video effects, any of those common resources, it's making sure that you have those locally. And then the other thing is to perpetually and constantly back up what you have home onto the cloud to the point where um, we kind of have it all broken down within our, we're we're on Premiere primarily. And so within our Premiere projects uh, folder, we have different backups, different iterations, every single night the editors back up their project file and so it's just a constantly rolling and so really consistent and in agreed upon naming conventions for all of that stuff and just being really clear as to what iteration something is. That's good advice. When you're doing that, what is sort of the methodology that you're using since you have a collaboration group, a a team of editors working together, what specifically is your process to make sure that there's, uh, you know, proper uh, management in masters and slaves of these uh, different assets or timelines or projects that are being populated throughout the day? Yeah, so we have uh, a consistent job folder structure on our server that I have transitioned and mirrored onto an internal collaboration folder within frame. And so the main frame project is named after how we always would name it, our job number, the project name, the client name. So that's our job folder. And then within that, it's broken out exactly how our server is broken out with assets, artworks, and fonts, and media footage, stills, documents, project files, all of it broken down. And then within those buckets are where we're backing up. And so they may not be 
the end all be all as they are on our server. Uh, they're more of like, this is where we back up these individual files that we have generated and created on the artist's end and making sure that they live on the cloud. And so it's about copying our job structure folder that is very familiar to all of the editors, sound design. It is, it's a familiar working environment for them. Everybody has access to those folders uh, through collaboration and they're on the team. And so everybody has access to all those folders. Everything looks familiar. They know where their buckets are. They know what they should be doing. There's just a little bit of a change where it's like, I need to back up this. On our um, studio system, everything is backed up. So if it's saved, you're done it's automatically backing up. We need to be that auto, right? And so now these project files uh, need to be broken down into every single day so we know what's what. So one of the challenges with editing is everybody's workflow is a little bit different and people are using different yeah. NLEs, people are sort of working in different situations. Um, but it sounds like your transition to work from home happened pretty quickly. What do you think contributed to your ability uh, to be able to make that transition so fast? There's a couple things that go into that. First of all, our studio it has an, an agreed upon method and this is the way that we attack these individual projects. And so we tend to not have editors going off into a different NLE. Uh, there's there's kind of an established method. The second thing is we're in St. Louis and so we've been using Frame for a long time. Uh, we have remote setups for live grading sessions. We have remote setups for live online editing sessions. And so all of these things were needed for us to do the level of work and the kind of work that we're doing. We needed to have all of those things for the last two, three, four years. Uh, and so that is one of the benefits now of being in St. Louis. We've kind of established a lot of these workflows over the last little bit here to where there's one extra little step now and it's the fact that the editors are not together, they're separated. The sound is not together, it's separated, color is separated. And so it's a lot of Slack communication, phone calls, making sure everybody is on the same page uh, with the project layout and how we're gonna do what we're gonna do. But you know, because we're in St. Louis, we've been kind of working on this remote thing for a while. And, uh, and I think that's helped the transition probably the most. What sort of bandwidth do you and your team generally have working from home? Um, any, I mean, it, it's kind of a big range, but anywhere from 50 up to 100 and then a couple have a gig. It, a lot of that kind of depends more, more so than the bandwidth, because I mean, bandwidth, depending on where you live, is, is it's gonna be fine for 99% of these workflows. Um, more than that is just being cognizant of the time it takes to upload something. So if you're not at the studio taking advantage of our of our business bandwidth, right? If you're not at the studio taking advantage of our hardware um, efficiencies, you just need to be cognizant of my home setup, my home internet. I need to export this a little bit earlier than I would. I need to start this upload a little bit earlier than I would. Um, but if you're working on 30s, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, it's not that much of a change. You just need to stop what you're doing 30 minutes earlier, make sure it exports fine and make sure it gets up when it needs to get up. There's a little bit more forethought that needs to go into it. What are my speeds? How long does something take to go up? And kind of backtracking that to be like, nah, I have to stop now and upload this to make sure that it still hits the deadline. What you're using is what we call a hybrid workflow where you're using a little bit of the cloud and a little bit of local storage and duplicating media yeah. and rec remedying, rectifying it all in, in the cloud. So based on that and the workflow you now have working with your team, how much less efficient would you say you are if you could give us like a percentage, like what has been the, you know, the, the reduction in efficiency from having to work from home? I mean, honestly, I would say it's 15% less efficient, like not a ton, but we're in the middle of projects that we have been working on before this happened. And so we haven't had to onboard a new project yet. And so I feel like that's where there's gonna be a little bit more of a learning curve in figuring out exactly, okay, what editor is doing what? We have to onboard this. We need to get media on site. We all of, all of those things, right? And so um, that's coming, <laughs> it's coming quickly. And so, That'll be a whole new kind of transition is to figure out how to get media um, locally and so that the editor can start editing. And also we're gonna have to be like considerably more hard lined on this editor is doing this because it can't just be this editor hops in here if they don't have the media locally. And so honestly with, with not being in studio, it's like maybe 10% less efficient, 15% less efficient, but there will be some transitions when we have new projects coming in the door. We need to figure out how to hit that. 
But what you're talking about is a very small amount. I mean, to say that working from home has only decreased 15%, you know, compared to some people that are at 0% efficiency right now, right? They've, they've had to pause. Right. right. A, and so that's yeah. a pretty minimal thing. Would you say that, um, could you just take us through a little bit of how Premier is playing a role in making sure that efficiency number stays so high? I mean, the Premiere plugin, the frame and Premiere integration is amazing and it just keeps getting better. And so there's a lot of that asset management and the asset handoff, the backups, the um, reconciling media, the spitting out cuts to clients and getting the notes back into Premiere. I mean, all of that is just seamless from our end. And it's a workflow that we've been using for a while. Even in the studio, I'm here and, you know, I have an editor there cutting on a spot and they'll still send me a frame link and I'll still throw in notes. Uh, and then maybe I'll, after I do that, I'll maybe go over there, talk with them, sit with them and we'll go through it. And so, you know, we were already using frame as internal note uh, and, and passing cuts between e each other. And so that premier frame um, marriage is pretty remarkable. And once you have it set up and you kind of wrap your head around how it works, I mean, you can kind of do anything. Awesome. Well, Lucas, I just want to say thank you for taking the time with us today. This is super helpful and congratulations on being able to maintain that efficiency in really difficult times. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And uh, thanks so much for doing this. And I'm excited to see the other ones because I mean, workflow, I mean, you know this, workflows are wonderful and they're exciting to hear how everybody else does their workflow because you can constantly modify, tweak, adapt what you're doing uh, to make it a little bit better, a little bit more um, efficient and sufficient. So yeah, yeah, thanks so much for doing this.